Section 44 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Tuesday, 12. Rode five miles to King's Chapel. There were six traveling preachers present. The house was very open, and the two sermons and love feast held three hours. I was chilled exceedingly. My subject was Ephesians 5, 1 through 3. Wednesday, 13. We rode westward 16 miles to Warwick Bristow's, where we held meeting, and then rode to Barry's Ford thence to Thomas Terry's, a Yorkshire Methodist, whom I married seven years ago to Anne W. Dowell, his present good wife, from a Methodist stock on the mother's side in Ireland. Thursday 14. We rode ten miles to the Golden Grove, at Cox's Meeting House. My subject was First John 2, 20. It is agreed that this is the best society we have in South Carolina. The land here is rich. We lodged at Deacon Terrence. On Friday we crossed Saluda at Wilson's Ferry, and rode fifteen miles to Thomas Willingham's, upon the Indian lands. Saturday 16. We rode ten miles to Nash's Meeting House, in Pendleton County, where I glossed upon Colossians 1, 27, 28. I was much affected with the faces and manners of this people. Mr. James Nash is not, nor any of his family, in fellowship with us, but are our most kind friends. We were used in the very best manner, and this was more abundantly acceptable. Friends in need are friends indeed. We had to preach in an open house. It was a summer's day. We had a love feast and sacrament. My subject was Second Peter 2, 9. The congregation was very large. Georgia, Monday, 18. We rode 26 miles into the state of Georgia, crossed Rocky River, properly so-called, likewise the savannah at the Cherokee Ford. It was wide, deep, and there were large rocks in it, and I had no guide. However, we came safe to William Tate's in Elbert County. Little did I think I should ever visit Georgia again, much less the frontiers of it. It was a rainy day but I was kept dry in the felicity. Not so with brothers Lee and Blanton. Tuesday, 19. We attended at Tate's Chapel in the Forks. It was a cold day. I gave a short exhortation on Revelation 21, 7. I passed a night with Charles Tate, formerly of Cokesbury, and was made exceedingly welcome and comfortable. Wednesday 20. Rode twenty miles to cold water, in a cold day, and held meeting in a cold meeting house, but we had a warm hearted people. I gave a brief sermon upon Ephesians 5 8. Walk as children of light. We lodged at, and were comfortably entertained by, Ralph Banks. Thursday 21. We rode sixteen miles sometimes through the naked woods, to Red Wines, where we had an unexpected congregation in the solitary woods. I held forth on, The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. The house was open, but the people were simple-hearted, and very kind. Friday 22 We came sixteen miles to Carroll's Meeting House, a new log cabin in the woods. Some of the people of the congregation are from the east and west parts of Maryland. I felt that the Lord was with them. We have the kitchen, house, and chamber all in one, and no closet but the woods. Saturday 23 At Park's New Cabin Chapel, after riding eighteen miles, I exhorted. We lodged at Stephen Westbrook's. Sabbath Day still at Park's Chapel. I preached upon Second Corinthians 6, 1. I doubt if there were ever twice as many crowded in so small a house. Some stood upon the benches, and others upon the floor. 
public and private meeting held five hours. We afterward had to ride ten or twelve miles to lodge at George Christian's. We traveled through Elbert, but mostly in Franklin County. We have crossed about thirteen branches of Broad River. Three of them, which rise near the head branches of Oconee, are large. The land is not very fertile, except what lieth upon the watercourses. Monday 25 We were detained by rain in the morning, but set off at nine o'clock, and came in at half-past one, after riding twelve miles to Charles Wakefield's, in Oglethorpe County, so called after the first governor of the state or province. Benjamin Blanton could go no farther, but went to bed with a high fever. I desired Jesse Lee to attend the appointments over the Oconee. We had the appearance of the beginning of winter, and were in a cold cabin, but with kind people. Tuesday, 26. We came six miles to Cornelius M. Carty's. Here we had to drop anchor again. Brother Blanton could go no farther this day, and as there were three of us in company, and one who was well able to do the work, I felt it my duty to do as I would be done by, and have been done by, that is, to stay and take care of the sick man. Wednesday 27 After Brother Blanton had been very ill, and in bed most of his time, I housed him in my carriage, and we proceeded down the Oconee, twelve miles, to Burl Popes, after a heavy siege through the woods, from one plantation to another, on Brother Blanton's stiff-jointed horse, that I would only ride to save souls, or the health of a brother. Our accommodations compensated for all. I admire the soft soil of Georgia, and it is pleasant to see the people plowing on the last of November, as if it were the month of April. The weather was very cold on Thursday and Friday. Saturday I rode seven miles up to Hudson's Ford, at the mouth of Trail Creek, to have a sight of Oconee River. Jesse Lee visited the forks of the river, and formed a circuit for one preacher. The land upon the river is good. I returned to Henry Pope's. Sabbath day, December 1. The weather still continues cold. At the new meeting house, my subject was Hebrews 3, 12-14. There appears to be more wealth than religion here. Monday 2 We rode twelve miles, in a very damp day, to the widow Stewart's. We had a large congregation for the day and place. The widow's house stands upon a line between Green and Oglethorpe counties. Tuesday 3 At Greensboro in a large meeting-house built by and for the Presbyterians, we held meeting. We lodged at William Upton's. We have traveled in two days about thirty-two miles. The badness of the weather and my constant uneasiness have injured me much. I have spoken very little in public. I drag along exceedingly heavy. It is serious work to be driving through the back settlements and having open meeting and dwelling-houses in the winter season. Wednesday 4 At Burke's Meeting House, Jesse Lee preached, and I exhorted upon the importance of the ministry, and ordained Brother Watts a local deacon. We lodged at John Crutchfield's, where we had a gracious family meeting. Thursday 5 We moved along in a cloudy, damp, cold day. Fourteen miles to Little Britain, a log pen, open at the top, bottom, and sides. A few people attended. My subject was Matthew 7, 8. Friday 6. We rode fifteen miles, through a heavy rain, to Hill's Meeting House, upon Long Creek, where six or seven preachers, with a few people, attended. My subject was Hebrews 10, 32. Hope Hull, Josias Randall, S. Cowles, and William Partridge came a long way to see me. We had a family meeting at Mother Hill's. 
It is about twenty years since I first visited this house. Saturday and Sabbath Day, 7-8 We held our quarterly meeting at Mark's meeting house. I had dreaded this appointment. I had some pain and some pleasure. The state of religion is low here. Hope Hull preached on Saturday upon Jeremiah 10, 8. We had some signs to show that life had not entirely departed in the love feast and sacrament. Benjamin Blanton preached Sabbath day, from Isaiah 28, 8, and I gave a gloss upon Joshua 14, 8. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. In the introduction, peculiar attention was paid to the dealings of God with Israel from the beginning to the end. The influence pious characters had in the case before us, two prevailing against ten, that the well-being of future generations required that a decided tone to the morals, manners, and religious opinions should be given by the first settlers of the country. The weight of the discourse was opened in two divisions. First, what God had done for many Christians. Secondly, their unfaithfulness and complaints, like the Israelites, and their bad influence upon the camp of Israel, as at the present day. Monday night. We rode twenty miles to Hope Hulls, near Washington, in Wilkes County. Tuesday ten we rested, and on Wednesday eleven I gave a discourse at Coke's Chapel, upon Galatians six nine. The rain began as we closed the meeting. I dined at D. Merriweather's, and rode home with Thomas Grant that evening, and was detained on Thursday and Friday in consequence of a rain. We have had an exceedingly heavy rain. The little river was impassable, but I was kindly and comfortably provided for. I lament the state of religion in these new settlements. New lands, new officers, and new objects occupy the minds of the people. I invented a continental general plan of movement through the eastern and western states, not much short of 7,000 miles. Saturday 14. I made an attempt to reach Phillips's bridge, but was soon stopped by a creek. Thence we went to a mill dam, full of holes and rolling stones. I did not choose to risk the overturning of the carriage into the mill pond or the creek. So I returned to D. Merriweather's, and appointed a meeting at Coke's Chapel, and upon the Sabbath day gave them a long, weighty talk, upon 1 Corinthians 7, 29. Monday 16. We had to take the rain and mud upon the Augusta Road. The wagons had been detained by high water. Men and wagons were very heavily loaded with rum. We rode twenty-four miles, and were kindly entertained at William Shields. Tuesday 17. Rode ten miles to James Allen's, and behold, neither the man nor his wife was at home. The day was far spent, and it was raining, so we stopped. Wednesday 18. Before we could get ready to move, it began to rain powerfully. We came down the Augusta Road, gouged up by wagons in a most dreadful manner, in consequence of which we were five hours in going twelve miles to Thomas Haynes, upon Uchi. I had great intestine war, having eat but little. But here we have all things comfortable. I doubt whether we shall be able to cross Savannah River in five days from this time, the former freshet being increased by latter rains. Thursday and Friday we rested. Saturday 21. We rode to Emgees to attend an appointment, but the rain prevented the people from coming. Sabbath Day 22. We came into Augusta Town. I went in the morning to hear a sermon, and in the afternoon I gave one, upon Hebrews 2, 1. We have preached several years in this town, but with little success. 
We want a house of our own here. On Monday 23, the waters were much assuaged. Augusta town is greatly improved in houses since I was here last. The boat trade from Savannah is very considerable. After waiting an hour on the banks of the river, we crossed, and came in about sunset, after riding twenty-two miles to Cooper's, in the Pines. South Carolina, Tuesday, 24. We came twenty-three miles to Chester's, the best entertainment we could find. It was but for a night. Christmas Day, 25. We rode twenty-three miles to a pole meeting house, near Trotty's, thence ten miles to Jacob Bars. Here I was once more at home. Thursday, 26. We rode down Edisto River, which was much swelled by the late rains. I dined at Murray's. We then proceeded up the stream to Mr. Hall's. We have ridden twenty-five miles this day. Friday, 27. We crossed at Four Holes Bridge, which was scarcely passable, the water being deep, and spread out upon the low land nearly three-quarters of a mile. I came accidentally to my appointment at the Cypress Chapel. My text was 1 Timothy 2, 5. For there is one God, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. 1. The great disproportion there is between a holy God and fallen mankind. 2. The absolute indispensable necessity of a mediator in nature and office. Saturday 28. I never knew worse roads. I needed one to hold on one side of my carriage to prevent my being overset in the mud. Sabbath day I preached in the old church, upon Psalm 118, 24-25. On Monday and Tuesday we had a little rest. Wednesday, January 1, 1800. We began our conference in Charleston, 23 members present. I had select meetings with the preachers each evening, who gave an account of the dealings of God with their own souls, and of the circuits they supplied the past year. Saturday 4. After determining by a large majority that our next meeting together, by divine permission, should be in Camden, the conference rose. Slow moved the northern post on the eve of New Year's Day, and brought the heart-distressing information of the death of Washington, who departed this life December 14, 1799. Washington, the calm, intrepid chief, the disinterested friend, first father, and temporal savior of his country, under divine protection and direction. A universal cloud sat upon the faces of the citizens of Charleston, the pulpits clothed in black, the bells muffled, the paraded soldiery, a public oration decreed to be delivered on Friday, 14th of this month, a marble statue to be placed in some proper situation. These were the expressions of sorrow, and these the marks of respect paid by his feeling fellow citizens to the memory of this great man. I am disposed to lose sight of all but Washington, matchless man. At all times he acknowledged the providence of God, and never was he ashamed of his Redeemer. We believe he died not fearing death. In his will he ordered the manumission of his slaves, a true son of liberty in all points. Sunday 5 After the burden of care was thrown off, I again resumed the pulpit and in order the better to suit my subject to meet the conference, the new year, ordination of elders and deacons, and the general's death, I made choice of Isaiah 61, 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. 1. The acceptable year of the Lord. 2. The day of vengeance of our God. 3 to comfort all that mourn. 
the congregation was large, decent, and solemn. The ordination was attended with unction from above, and the sacrament with tenderness of heart. At the new church, before the ordination of deacons, Jesse Lee discoursed upon The harvest truly is great, etc. After encountering many difficulties, I was able to settle the plan of stations and to take in two new circuits. Monday 6 The main body of the preachers left the city. I desired Jesse Lee, as my assistant, to take my horse and his own, and visit between this and the 7th of February, Crusawachi, Savannah, and St. Mary's, a ride of about 400 miles, and to take John Garvin to his station. The time has been when this journey would have been my delight, but now I must lounge in Charleston. Sunday 12 We have had a week of snow, which made the ways extremely miry. I attended the church in Cumberland Street. My subject was First Peter 1, 17-19. I did not enter, as I wished, into the marrow of the subject. Monday 13. Benjamin Blanton left me to attend his charge of preachers, circuits, and to promote the sale of our books within the limits of the Charleston Conference. I have kept no journal from Sabbath to Sabbath. I have been employed in reading and answering letters to different and distant parts of the continent. Sunday 19. My subject was First Peter 1, 6, 7. I have been very unwell since Friday, but as I only attempt to labor upon Sabbath days, I could not stand back from duty. I was greatly assisted in the morning, but much outdone in the afternoon, in body and mind. At intervals, Nicholas Snethen read to me those excellent sermons of Mr. James Soren, a French Protestant minister at The Hague. They are long, elaborate, learned, doctrinal, practical, historical, and explanatory. No journal until Friday 24. I have been unwell in my bowels. C. Patton sent me a decoction of bark, rhubarb, and nutmeg, which helps me much. This week I employed in answering my correspondence in the District of Maine, states of Massachusetts, New York, Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. On Thursday night departed this life Edward Rutledge, Governor of South Carolina. He was one of the tried patriots of 1775 and 1776. The Africans gave him a good character for his humanity. On Saturday 25, his dust is to be committed to dust. I have said ye are gods, but ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Sunday 26 I was under some weakness of body and mind. I attended at the old church, and preached on Romans 12, 9 through 11. January 30th we had another snow. February 3rd. I have kept no journal for some days. Sabbath was a cloudy day, with rain. My sacramental subject was Revelations 1, 5, 6. I have had a distressing cold in my head. Notwithstanding which, I have read much in books, letters, and lives. Wednesday 5 I began to relax my mind from writing long letters. I dined with Jesse Vaughn, and afterward visited Mr. Warnack's family, at the Orphan House. There is no institution in America equal to this. Two or three hundred orphans are taught, fed, and clothed, and then put apprentices to good trades. Friday 7. Jesse Lee and George Doherty came to town. The former hath been a route of about six hundred miles, and my poor Gray hath suffered for it. Sunday 9. I gave my last charge at Cumberland Street Church, from Romans 12, 14 through 18. Monday 10. I left the city of Charleston. The day was cold and the roads bad. 
we came through Broughton Swamp. In the evening my carriage got set fast. The second draught, the hook upon the swingle tree, gave way, and I had to take to the mud to fix the traces. At half-past eight o'clock we came to Monk's Corner. Tuesday, eleven. It snowed. I was distressed for a wagoner whose horses ran away at the sight of my carriage, and whirled the wagon among the stumps and trees. Happily no considerable injury was suffered. We lodged at the Widow Turk's, near Nelson's Ferry, an extremely cold night. Wednesday, twelve. We wrought our passage over and through the river and swamp, and as long as we kept the public road it was all swamp. We at length came to Gibson's Chapel, where I preached upon James one twenty-five. We dined at Bowman's, and in the evening held meeting at Mr. Gales's. Thursday 13 was a very cold day. It terminated in rain. No meeting at Bradford's. Friday 14. We came to Remberts, where, at three o'clock, I spoke upon Hebrews 3, 3, to a few people. Brother Snethan also gave them a discourse. Saturday 15. We came to Camden. The weather is still cold. We stopped to feed at Navy's. We have ridden, since Monday last, 130 miles and my horse would not have been so outdone in two hundred or three hundred miles upon good roads. My soul hath been kept in patience, and much prayer. My body is in great weakness, undergoing disagreeable changes with the weather and my constitutional maladies. Sunday 16 At Camden I preached upon 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20. We administered the Lord's Supper. The day was cold for this climate, and but few people attended. Monday 17. We rode twenty miles to Horton's, and on Tuesday 18 held meeting there. Wednesday 19. We rode forty miles through the sands, and roads made bad by snow and frost. We were traveling as late as eight o'clock in the evening, groping in the dark, until a boy guided us along by the blaze of pine wood to Brother Shaw's peaceable dwelling. He was gone to his circuit, but his gracious wife and children were at home. Thursday 20 At Jackson's meeting house we had some gracious feelings. After an absence of ten years, I called once more at friend Pace's. End of section 44 Recording by Brian Keenan